Hello, now are battery powered electric vehicles the solution to every problem facing motoring today? Or is there an alternative? We took a very quick trip to Belgium to sample something quite interesting. Now don't let the familiar face of this car fool you because underneath that X5 skin hides the technology that BMW believes needs to be part of our energy mix going forward. Let's get into it. Dream, search, drive. Cars.coza. Get insurance that pays out faster than the word Archie. Budget, the official insurer of good South Africans. Now, I am quite a big fan of electric vehicles. I love the way they drive. I love how comfortable they are, how quiet they are, the immediacy of the power. If there was a car priced at the right price point that I could afford an EV as a commuter car, I'd probably buy one tomorrow. But the reality is that in South Africa, your EV is pretty much entirely powered by coal. Now look, this will get better as our grid transitions to sustainable energy over the next coming years. But right now though, this admirable theory that EVs are great for the environment, in South Africa at least, is compromised by the fact that we are still digging up dinosaur juice from the ground and burning it to make power. And as much as I appreciate that EVs are getting cheaper, we spoke about that Aura Cat recently, which is definitely going to come in well under a million rand, which is great. But at the moment, you pay a hefty price for an EV in South Africa, a lot of which is down to the government and their taxes, but you are paying a lot for the tech right now. And that just means that an EV is not a practical solution for many South African motorists. Hydrogen is very much a hyped up technology at the moment. So we arrived in Belgium with some skepticism, even though in Europe right now, and especially in Germany, there are quite a number of hydrogen filling stations. But as such, right now you can only choose between two cars that are actually hydrogen powered. There's the Hyundai Nexo and there's the Toyota Mirai. And the thing is, BMW has been on off with hydrogen for decades now, and other brands have been dipping their toes into the hydrogen pool, which sounds a little dangerous. At present, it seems like the entire industry is completely focused on battery electric vehicles. Now, BMW believes that one technology alone is not going to get us to climate neutral mobility. They believe in the versatility of hydrogen in helping us transition from the current way that we get around. They believe that hydrogen is an important part of the jigsaw puzzle to move us off of fossil fuels. However, there are some caveats. As is the case with normal electricity generation, there are different ways to produce hydrogen. There's green hydrogen, which is the result of using sustainable energy to create the hydrogen itself. And then there are more dirty ways to make it. And essentially that's when you're just burning fossil fuels to make the hydrogen, which isn't a particularly great solution. There is also the problem of infrastructure. For instance, in South Africa right now, there, as far as we know, is one hydrogen vehicle owned by Toyota South Africa, a Mirai, and there is one place to fill it up, and that is in Potschefstroom, which doesn't really help the rest of us. <laughs> Now, the EU has put some structures in place, they do love some structures, which dictate some new rules which will standardize the design of hydrogen fueling stations across Europe. Now, that should help a lot when it comes to the manufacturers building their cars. Europe also wants in the near future to have at least one hydrogen refueling station for every 100 kilometers of trans-European road network. It's also interesting to note that in Germany, there are already over a hundred hydrogen refueling stations. So owning a hydrogen car in that country is already quite practical. So what does all of this mean for South Africa? Well, while we're in Belgium, we met the CEO of Hydrogen Europe, and he told us that South Africa is extremely well placed to become a manufacturing hub for hydrogen going forward. It's being called a critical region, but not only just for hydrogen manufacture, but for green hydrogen manufacture. 
Now, as I learned this weekend by not wearing any sunscreen at the Formula E and coming home with a bright red forehead, South Africa has a lot of sun and wind. And if we could harness that, then we could definitely become a production hub, not only for hydrogen, but for producing green hydrogen. And the thing is, this is already happening. A company like Anglo American is already producing green hydrogen in South Africa, and they're using it to run the world's largest hydrogen fuel cell powered mine haul truck. This thing weighs 500 tons. Well, I mean, it can carry 500 tons. It weighs like 200 and then can put 300 on top. And it's all powered by hydrogen. It's really cool. Now one area where a hydrogen fuel powered car really does beat out an electric vehicle with a large battery is in terms of charge or refilling times because to refill something like this new hydrogen powered iX5 takes about five minutes. You basically pull up to what looks like a relatively normal petrol pump, you connect it to the car and you fill up the tank in five minutes, you're ready to go. There's no need for protective gear or anything like that or any gloves like that. And also existing infrastructure, existing petrol stations can be converted to carry and store hydrogen as well. So it tends to be, or it can be a little bit easier than building completely new infrastructure for high powered charging stations. So how much is this going to cost us, the end consumer, me and you? How much is it going to sting in the wallet area? Well, you buy hydrogen per kilogram and right now in the EU, it is not regulated. So you could pay anything from 10 euros per kilogram to 20 euros per kilogram. And the iX5 has a six kilogram tank. And I'll take you through what that means in Rand terms in just a second. Now let's get into BMW's strategy for this car and the car itself. BMW at the moment only has plans to make 100 hydrogen iX5s. The point is for them to go out into the world and generate real world data that they can then analyze and it will also be used to expose decision makers to the technology. And if the rollout of the infrastructure happens as fast as everybody wants it to happen, then we'll probably see a hydrogen iX5 on showroom floors in about the second half of this decade. So about two years time from now, really wish it was faster. It'd be nice if it was like next month, we're getting a hydrogen X5. I'd be quite excited about that. Anyway, these things take time. Now there is very little to distinguish a normal X5 from an iX5. If you're very sharp eyed and a complete car nerd like me, you might have noticed that the grille is slightly different and that the exhaust exits are actually in front of the rear wheels, although you kind of have to crouch down to see those. There are, however, numerous blue accents around the car, which do sort of give the game away. And there are interesting technical details like the tires, which are completely made out of recycled materials. Now, interestingly, the entire hydrogen fuel cell system has been fitted to the X5 without affecting the cabin space at all. The boot size, for instance, is exactly the same. The car has two hydrogen tanks, which combined make up six kilograms of capacity, and the secondary tank is neatly located in the transmission tunnel. The fuel cell itself is mounted up front and at the back of the vehicle you'll find the same motor and battery that is fitted to the BMW iX. Now the fuel cell powers not only the wheels but also feeds into the battery pack keeping that charged up and regeneration is used to charge up the battery pack as well. And what that means is that you actually never have to plug in the iX5 into you know, the wall or an electric charger. You just have to put hydrogen in. BMW gets its fuel cells from Toyota. They have a long-standing technical partnership. So how does this all work? Well, there is a chemical reaction in the fuel cell between the gaseous hydrogen and oxygen from the air. The gaseous hydrogen is pulled from the two 700 bar carbon fiber reinforced hydrogen tanks. 
In terms of power outputs, the hydrogen fuel cell puts out 125 kilowatts and the electric motor adds 170 kilowatts for a total system output of 295 kilowatts, which is a lot. And so the iX5 drives like a very powerful electric car. Acceleration is quick, zero to 100, comes up in under six seconds and it will go on to a top speed of 180 kilometers an hour. The experience is very much like driving a normal electric electric car. It's completely quiet. There's great responsiveness from the engine and all that comes out of the exhaust tailpipes is hot air and water vapor. Like a, like a politician in really cold weather. Eventually. Now I promise I am getting to the running costs of the car, but just one more word on the drive itself. Now we were pretty impressed with this car. In fact, there was not much to suggest that it was a prototype at all. Even the instrumentation had been upgraded to include a stat which read kilograms per 100 kilometers. And on our test route, we achieved 1.4 kilograms per 100 kilometers. And that was with a lot of stop go traffic and some highway driving. But even so, BMW is absolutely adamant that this car will not become a series production model and most likely the next generation of X5 will feature a hydrogen derivative. So we are just going to have to wait. But now, the costs. Finally! Right, are you ready for some numbers? Because they're about to come at you like a malfunctioning tennis ball cannon. And I'm also going to look at my laptop because there's a bit too much to remember. So, in terms of purchase price, BMW says that a hydrogen vehicle will cost about the same to buy as a battery electric vehicle. Now, that doesn't exactly solve the problem of the cost of battery electric vehicles, but hopefully that will improve as economies of scale kick in and as more countries turn on their hydrogen production, the cost of the fuel should get cheaper as well. But at the moment, you pay about 10 euros per kilogram of hydrogen. That translates with our terrible exchange rate to about 195 five rand per kilogram which means that it would cost about 1170 rand to fill up the ix5's six kilogram tanks now the range on that will give you about 500 kilometers a current BMW X5 has a tank capacity of 83 liters, which at the moment would cost about 1,745 Rand to fill up at 21 Rand and three cents per liter. So running costs will be in about the ballpark of running a petrol powered SUV. However, the one thing that hydrogen powered cars do have going for them is that there are a lot less service parts in those cars compared to ICE vehicles. Now, even given all of these potential positives, BMW says that hydrogen powered vehicles are not a complete replacement for battery electric vehicles. Instead, they are looking at hydrogen as the second leg of their new energy strategy. They think that hydrogen cars will appeal to people who say live in particularly cold climates, who have to tow often, or who maybe don't have access to charging facilities readily available. Our experience with the hydrogen iX5 left us thinking that maybe, just maybe, hydrogen could be the silver bullet tech that we've been waiting for. After all, it can power trucks, buses, trains, even ships in the right circumstances. And if cars come out that need hydrogen and ships need hydrogen and buses need hydrogen and trucks need hydrogen, and South Africa is the country making the hydrogen, well, that can only be good for our economy. So we're sort of sitting here, fingers crossed, that this whole hydrogen experiment does work out. But I'm super interested to hear what you think. Do you think hydrogen is a fuel of the future? Let us know in the comments below and do check out some of the other 700 videos we have on the channel right now. Thanks very much for watching. Be safe and buy a car that goes a mug sometime soon. Ah, I too! <coughs> I too! I too! Who am I? Whoever you are, with budget you could save 420 per month. Cars.coza. 